Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything coming at you with another one of my learn to play videos. In this video, in this series of videos, we're going to be learning to play Traveler using the Mongoose Second Edition rule set. Uh, this is a great rule set. I strongly recommend this. Uh, now, there's a few caveats that I want to say. Traveler uh, is and always will be my favorite role-playing game. And uh, I might be a little biased, but uh, hopefully what I'll do is I'll try to stick to the rules. I'll explain everything as it's written and try not to interject too much of my personal philosophies in here. Uh, now, over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to have... Uh, any page or any chart that I might pull up in the Traveler book, I'll try to put up over here so that you can uh, follow along with me. In this series, we're going to have probably about four or five videos. I'm going to break this book down into manageable chunks. And then also, if you've got friends, you're thinking about running this game, and you've got friends that uh, don't know how to play Traveler or never played it before, direct them to this series of videos. Maybe they can learn how to play Traveler before they start making characters or something like that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Traveler and you want to learn what the hype is all about, then... Uh, watch these videos, and maybe you'll love Traveler as much as I do. All right, so let's break open the book, right? Uh, Traveler is obviously a game that's set in a universe which is in the far future. Uh, most players don't come from Earth. They come from the Empire, and the Empire is a... The Third Imperium is a... Uh, a government body of nobles that span a huge amount of space. Uh, it's astronomical. And uh, and the uh, thousands of planets, thousands of worlds in this empire. And uh, it governs the area of space that your players most likely will be playing in. So you'll be going from an imperial world to an imperial world to an imperial world. But you, depending on how you run the game, you might be on the borderlands, you might be on in the fringes, and you might run a game that is outside of the empire. Uh, you will need a... Now I'm going over the introduction, right? I'm going over the introduction where you obviously need players that are playing. It's like any other role-playing game that you're familiar with. Uh, you have players, and then you have a referee. Um, the referee do, is not the enemy. He doesn't run monsters. What he runs is the universe, right? So he's running the universe, and the players are in the universe. And so, like, if you go to a planet the referee has to be prepared and know what's on that planet. And he will have to like manage the scenarios and the campaign, just like any other role-playing game. Uh, he, has the, he controls the animals or aliens or shopkeepers or starport personnel or pirates or, or Navy personnel. Now, in the first part of this book, they talk about the difference between a scenario and a campaign. A scenario is a, a specific, like a module or a specific mission that the players are on. Now, it might span multiple game sessions, but it's still just, it has a start and a finish, and it's, and it's usually short. Like it's one, let's go rescue the, the cat from the tree, and then when it's done, that's the end of the scenario. Now, if you have a series of scenarios that go on and on and on, or you tie them all together, then that is usually called a campaign. You all know this. You know, you know the difference between a scenario and a campaign. If, you, if you're watching this, you're probably already playing other role-playing games. But if not, there you go. Now, there are different campaign ideas that they throw at you. There's Traveler has tendency to run what's called a trader campaign where the players buy cargo on one planet or carry freight from one planet to the next to take money to make money to pay for their mortgage on their ship or pay for life support or fuel uh, that's traditionally what the uh, 
a traveler campaign would be in the background. That shouldn't be the forefront. Uh, that is, is not really adventuring. That's just how they make ends meet. Uh, another option would be the military campaign. Some referees like to run uh, ground battles and mass combat tanks and, you know, paratroopers and grav tanks and airplanes and stuff like that. And you can be a mercenary unit that participates in some kind of major conflict or something like that. Uh, a lot of times, that's fun. And then there's the explorer campaign where you're going to planets or systems that are not explored yet. And you tend, you'll be able to find all the aliens and, and make your introductions and stuff like that. Um, other options might be what's called the traveler campaign. And that's traditional traveler where you go on, you get patrons that ask you to do missions and you be, basically become like a D&D &D adventurer, right? You're you're an adventurer. They call it Traveler. Okay, it talks about further reading. These are other books from Mongoose that might help you. And then, okay, game conventions. This is important. Okay, put, put your learning caps on now. Game conventions. You're rolling D6. That's all you're rolling. Right? I'm looking for D6. Yeah, you, you only roll six-sided dice. Those are the same dice that you find in Risk, Monopoly. You find them in Yahtzee. Any, any of those games have six-sided dice. And if you don't have any six-sided dice, go take them out of your risk game. I'm sure you got a few of those. You only need two, right? So uh, usually when you make a, uh, a die roll, it'll say it's a 1D. It doesn't need to say 1D6 or 1D8 or 1D12 because there's no D8s or D12s. There's only D6. So the Tables all say 1D, or they'll say 2D, and that's what they're talking about. You're rolling one dice or two dice, uh, and then you just usually just add them together. So like if you roll a 3 and a 4, it totals 7, and that's what your roll was. Uh, now if it says 2D plus 3, or 3D minus 2, what it's saying is roll that number of dice, and then add or subtract that number. So like in my example, the 2D plus 3 would be a 3, a 4, and add a 3. So it would be a 10. Okay, then there's occasionally you'll need to roll a D3. It's not 3D, it's D3. A D3 is a three-sided die. Luckily, I have three-sided dice. Uh, basically, it's a D6. It goes 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. But if you don't have one, then just divide by 2. So like a 1 and a 2 would be counted as 1, a 3 and a 4 would count as a 2, and a 5 and a 6 would count as a 3. Now there's something unique to Traveler that I've seen, and I haven't seen it anywhere else. It's called a D66. A D66 is like your traditional percentile dice, but instead of D10s, you're using D6s. So you're getting a number between 1 and 6, is your 10 digits, and you're getting a number between one and six is your ones digit. So the best you could get would be a 66, and the lowest you could get would be an, an 11, a one and a one, right? So it'd go one, 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 two, one, three, all the way up to two, 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 three, two, four, and then you got six, one, six, two, six, three, all the way to six, six. And uh, there are charts divided up with a D66. Now, uh, when you roll uh, dice, usually there is a modifier. And uh, so there's a difference between a roll and a check. Even though they can be inter interchanged, they're basically both rolls or both checks, but the way the rules kind of break them down is a roll is against your stat. So like strength or dex or something like that. And those stats, once you generate your character, and that'll be in another chapter, we will determine what the modifier is that each of those stats have. So let's say you've got a strength of 9, and that gives you a plus 1. Okay, so it gives you a plus 1 to do something. So I say, okay, you're having a tug-of-war with this dog. He's holding the other end of the rope, and you're pulling on it, right? And so I might ask the player make a strength 
roll. And so what he'll do is he'll roll two dice, he'll add his strength modifier, and he almost always tries to get an eight. Eight is the basis, basic center number. Uh, if I wanted to make it easier, I would say roll a six or roll a four or something like that. And if I wanted to make it harder, I might say you got to roll a 10 because it's a really big dog or whatever. Okay, and that's how the rolls work. It's two dice, add your stat modifier, and try to hit or beat a target number. Now, if you exceed that target number, and we'll get into this in, in another uh, chapter as well, but if you exceed that target number, then you have what's called an effect. Effect means you beat the number, right? And every point that you beat the number by, up to six, is your effect. So if you beat it by three, then you have a three effect. A lot of times those, th those effects will give you bonuses. Okay, then there's something called a check. A check, and remember, this is this is standard rules here. The, the check is when you have a skill check. Uh, so let's say I'm a pilot, right? And I've got pilot one. Well, I'm going to roll my dice, and I'm going to add my pilot skill level to that. But checks also include a stat. So if my referee says, you need to have dexterity, to dodge these asteroids and use your pilot skill. So what I'll do is I'll roll two dice, I'll add my pilot skill and my dex modifier, and then maybe I'll have a negative dex modifier, maybe I'm not very dexterous at all. But if I am dexterous and I am skilled and I roll the dice, I add it all together, and that basically gives the referee an idea, of, especially if I have an effect, will give him an idea of how well I avoided those asteroids. So rolls include stats only. Checks include skills and stats. Okay, now if you roll a natural two, snake eyes, or if you roll a natural 12, boxcars, a natural two and a natural 12 are not always an automatic fail and an automatic success. Not always. Uh, some actions, they will be. Some actions, it'll be a fumble. Some actions, it'll be critical success. But usually, 99% of the time, a 2 is just a 2 and a 12 is just a 12. Uh, dice modifiers. Uh, they're, it's called a DM. If you see a DM, it's not Dungeon Master. It's a dice modifier. And there are things that will cause you a die modifier, like range or cover or... Uh, some reactions that might happen. These all give you a dice modifier. And dice modifiers are just exactly what they are. You roll the dice and you modify the number by what the dice modifier is. So if you got a plus four, you roll two dice and add four. Doey. Okay. Now rounding. This is, this is different than that other fifth edition game that's out in the market. If you ever, if you ever have to round off, you round down. Always. It's always down. For the players, for the enemy, doesn't matter who you're rounding for, it's always down. So if I say round 2d6 and you roll 2d6 and you get a 3, guess what? That's a 1. Okay. All right. Now there's something unique in Traveler. Well, not, not unique, but the philosophy is not unique, but it's something called tech level, right? Uh, this is, this is, the cornerstone of Traveler. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the key features in Traveler that makes Traveler what it is. Uh, every civilization out there, and remember, remember that empire that's got a thousand worlds? Well, guess what? They're not all equally developed. Some have better cars, some has, have better planes, some have better ships, some have horrible weapons. You know, they're using swords and shields. And then there's other societies that are using uh, Gatling laser cannons or whatever, you know, so you have different levels of, and they call this tech level. You have different levels of technology. Uh, tech level zero is a primitive, right? And then you go up to tech level, uh, let's say, four, that's industrial. And then tech seven and eight are, okay, tech level eight 
is kind of close to what Earth is today. That's tech level eight. And then you got uh, tech nine all the way up to tech 15 is high stellar. You know, you got fusions and stuff like that. But each tech level is not um, defined by everybody in tech five. If this planet is tech five and this planet is tech five, they're not exactly going to be the same. They might have better planes. They might have better ships. But the average of their tech levels come into this tech, this uh, the tech level of a planet. Uh, I know players and game masters are very concerned about tech levels because when you go to a new world or a new planet, you have to worry about what the you not worry you have to be excited about the tech level that's on that planet because if it's a tech level high enough for you to get some high-tech equipment, then, then you'd be like, yeah, we're on a high-tech planet, yeah. <laughs> so then we'll go out and like go shopping, you know, and believe it or not, you can't, you can't buy laser rifles on a tech level zero world. I mean, they've got, they ba barely have stone clubs. All right, so the next chapter will be Traveler Creation. I want you to come back for the next video for Traveler Creation. That's going to be exciting. And that's uh, Traveler Character Creation is the only one of its kind. And it's a little complicated, but it's a breeze to do. And I can explain, once I explain it to you, you'll have no problem understanding. So come back for our second episode of our Let's Learn to Play Traveler. Traveler character creation. See that.